Member statements. The member for Chatham Kent, Leamington. Hi, good morning, Speaker. On Saturday, April 20th, I was so proud to join well over 100 volunteers, community members, and sponsors to officially mark the opening of the Wheatley Arboretum and Learning Trail. The Wheatley Horticultural Society, led by my friends Donna Mateer and Sophie Jefferson, in partnership with Chatham Kent Trails and supported by dozens of local sponsors, succeeded in crafting this vision. It includes a beautiful 1.3-kilometer trail, an outdoor recreation and learning space. Located strategically near our baseball fields and our local public school, the grounds feature hundreds of newly planted trees and plants native to the Carolinian forest, including the Kentucky coffee tree, hackberry, pawpaw, tulip tree, and American sycamore. These precious tree species are complemented by manicured grounds and locally crafted metal park benches to relax and reflect as well as outdoor, four-season fitness equipment for all ages to enjoy. This project is another fine demonstration of a community's resolve and resilience. Wheatley continues to work together to overcome adversity and care for one another. This beautiful outdoor activity and educational space symbolizes both healthy living and fellowship by reconnecting the community to one another and to nature. Congratulations, and thank you to everyone involved for their hard work and dedication to bring this project from idea to reality. Thank you for being Wheatley Strong. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. School boards in Toronto are facing a funding shortfall because of this government's failure to properly fund education in Ontario. The Toronto District School Board is short $27 million. Parents often contact me about how this underfunding is affecting their kids' education. I think of Adi. His son is in a developmentally delayed class in Clinton School. His son has been attacked twice by another child. He has been scarred physically. The school knows they need another skilled educator in the room to keep the kids safe, but they don't have the staffing allocation. I think of Janice and Christine at Kensington. They've just learned they will have a grade four, five, six class for this coming year. So that means a teacher will have to explain three different classes all day, every day. That's a very difficult task. It means that older kids will sit there in the class and be bored, and it means younger kids will sit in the class and feel completely overwhelmed. Stories like this come into my office every single week. Every school is having to do more with less, year in and year out. Now, the TDSB has asked the ministry to fund schools properly and to account for the extra costs they must shoulder because of provincial and federal directives, because of COVID, because of inflation. And how does this ministry respond? How does the minister respond? They look the other way. I want schools to be properly funded. I want our kids to have an excellent public school education. The TDSB is asking for a new funding deal, and I support this request, and I hope the ministry and the government supports this request as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Bruce Gray Owen South. Thank you, Speaker. Colleagues, last Sunday I had the pleasure of attending the Arts, Culture and Volunteer Awards, which took place at the Tom Thompson Art Gallery in Owen Sound. It was a wonderful event that recognized many talented artists and community volunteers in our wonderful Grey Bruce community. I was inspired by the amazing talents and energy of all who were nominated. While Tom Thompson was born in Claremont, Ontario, he was raised in Leith, a lovely community just east of Owen Sound. He developed his distinctive craft after working with the artists who would eventually form the Group of Seven and also after visiting Algonquin Park. He spent much time at the park, and his outstanding work consists on almost entirely of landscapes, including trees, skies, lakes, and rivers. Some of his notable works include Northern Pine, Spring Ice, The West Wind, and, of course, The Jack Pine. Tom Thompson passed away at the early age of 39 on Canoe Lake in Algonquin Park. While he died before the formal establishment of the Group of Seven, he is often considered an unofficial member. His beautiful resting place is at the Leith United Church Cemetery. Thank you, Tom Thompson, for your amazing talent and for your link to our great Grey Bruce community. And thank you to the great team at the Tom Thompson Art Gallery, the excellent staff, 
board, and volunteers for making the, art, the gallery an inspiring place that honours an inspiring icon, Tom Thompson. Thank you. Thank you. Your statements, the member for Mishkigawak, James Bay. Monsieur le Président, j'ai écrit une lettre ouverte plus. Mr. Speaker, I've written an open letter last week, which I would like to share today. I, here, I'm reading a part of the letter. More than two million of Ontario have no mm, medical doctor, and this is actually very difficult for Ontarians. This is very heavy for them, and I think about the city of Hearst, which is a city in the forestry sector, which has a few thousand people, and many of these uh, citizens have no uh, doctor. They live in French, and half of the Francophone people say they speak in English, and they have to speak in English with their doctor. We need to improve services in French to, uh, for the population, which means that we need to increase the budget also for these doctors. We need to improve the French system also for school transportation and in order to resolve a crisis for medical doctors in French. We know that we need to invest millions of dollars in the south of the province and this is actually the reality of the francophones in Ontario. They need to, actually people have to choose if they can have access to services in French. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when people step up to help those who are struggling in the community, their passion to make a difference is often contagious. In the suburb of Riverside South, in the riding of Carleton, a group of people has stepped up to create the Community Table, a new volunteer-run food bank. Statistics Canada reports that more than 600 households in that affluent community live below the poverty line. Members of The Gathering, a Christian church in Riverside South, realized that families in Riverside South were using the food bank, food bank in the adjacent suburb of Barhaven and in other communities. They launched an organic project and created the Community Table, which will open its doors on Monday, May 6. Jeff Brierley, owner of the Your Independent Grocery Store in Riverside South, where I often go to get my groceries, has generously provided a space inside his store until a permanent location for the Community Table can be found. He's also assisting with the collection of food donations. As the MPP for Carleton, I could not be more proud of the volunteers in Riverside South who have turned a need in the community into a reality. More often than not, we are oblivious to the poverty and hunger that's all around us. Our lives are measured by the impact we have on others. The community table will have an immediate impact on hundreds of people in our community. And before long, I know it will impact thousands. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Uh, thank you, Speaker. We all know that gas prices jumped an average of 14 cents per litre across the GTA last week, and Premier Ford immediately raised the concern of disgusting price gouging by Ontario gas station. I applaud the Premier's statement and rise to offer him a solution. Residents of Nickel Belt in Northern Ontario have been dealing with price gouging at the pump for years. Fuel company set the price per litre according to what the market can bear. Apparently in the North, we can bear a lot. Thousands of people have signed my petition to regulate the price of gas. We regulate the price of energy when it comes to natural gas, when it comes to electricity. What is stopping us from regulating the price of a litre of gas? The five provinces and many U.S. states already have gas price regulation, and it works. I ask that the Premier finally consider regulating the cost of gasoline here in Ontario so that none of us have to be gouged when we go and fill up. This is a moment when this Premier can actually get it done. You have recognized that Ontarians are being gouged by the fuel retailer across the province. Let's end price gouging at the pump now, Speaker. We can do this. Excellent. Thank you very much. The next statement, the member for Oxford. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Norris Chamber of Commerce recently handed out its annual awards of excellence. These awards honour outstanding local businesses and residents who contribute to the growth and success of the community, and I'd like to congratulate this year's winners. The Brandwood Farms and Ducer Farms, winners of the Family Farm of Year Award of North Township. The Wurring Farms, families, winners of the Family Farm in the South Township. Speedy Electric, recipient of the Small Business of the Year Award. Congratulations on 50 years in business. Joe's Carpentry named the Large Business of the Year. Thanks for the work you did on my house. Paige, winner of the Agriculture Bursary Essay Contest and a check for her future education. Jared, a winner of the High School Scholarship Essay Contest and a check to be used in his post-secondary education. Everett McGinnis, a member of the Norwich Upper Deck Team and recipient of the Youth Citizenship of the Year. Lynn DePlank, winner of the Citizen of the Year Award for her community-minded involvement and volunteer work. Jacqueline Boddy, a recipient of the Judy Cayley Memorial Award for her extensive volunteer service to the people of Norwich. And finally, Tom Hamilecki, who was presented the Special Achievement Award for his significant fundraising and auctioneering contributions. Mr. Speaker, these winners and their hard work, innovation, and dedicated service are invaluable to the community of Oxford. Congratulations to all the winners. Congrats. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Haldeman, Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. Last weekend, over 260 hockey players converged on the Langton Arena, a beautiful building spanning five decades of rich culture and tradition. Those players were there for a tournament also rich in tradition, the Langton Old Timers Six Pack. This is a tournament that has been attracting and boasting hockey talent for over 28 years. It's called the Six Pack because you have five players and a goalie, no subs. Competition is stiff in the Carter Division as junior and a handful of OHL players face off. The 35, 45, and 55 games, well, they showcase many of those who one time could really light things up. For the second time in the tournament's history, a women's division hit the ice, and one of the five teams was the Brady Underhill Barn Burners. Underhill's Farm Supply and yours truly teamed up to sponsor both my son's carded team as well as our ladies' team. My teammates, who included goalie Sierra Bardick, Briar Barker, Brooke Cope, Courtney Dennis, Meg Seabock, and Rachel Vaness, we skated to the championship game but came up short against some talented girls from the Stratford area. In the timekeeper's box for many of the games was arena fixture Roger Demeester, who recorded his 8,660th game during the tournament. Absolutely incredible. The tournament has the little town of Langton buzzing from Wednesday to Sunday, with games running every half hour. The Langton Old Timers have this event down to a science, and they are the ones responsible for the great hockey, camaraderie, and bringing the community together. Thank you to all who had another hand or had a hand in another successful year. See you at the rink in 2025. Thank you much. Member statements. The member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you very much, Speaker. And I'm happy to say that Kitchener is getting it done when it comes to building housing. Premier Ford recently joined me at Kitchener City Hall to congratulate them on a job well done. For meeting their housing goals, Kitchener received $14 million from our government wow. as part of the Building Faster wow. Fund. The fund is a three-year, $1.2 billion program that encourages municipalities to address the housing supply crisis uh, here in the province. The plan allows municipalities to receive funding for making significant progress against their targets by providing money for infrastructure to build more homes. Kitchener broke ground on a total of 3,579 new housing units in 2023. That's 139% above their targeted goal. They knocked it out of the park, Speaker. Kitchener Mayor Barry Verbanovic and the rest of his council have done a phenomenal job. Barry knows that addressing the housing crisis is a team effort. The mayor went on to say, tackling this challenge will take all of community, uh, an all-of-community approach with all orders of government and the private and non-for-profit sectors working together to ensure Ontario, every Ontario resident has both a roof over their head and any supports they may need in order to live a great life. And I can wholeheartedly support that sentiment, Speaker. Thank you very much to Kitchener for getting it done. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, last week, uh, 
uh, was Volunteer Appreciation Week, and it was my absolute pr privilege to rise in the House today to celebrate the remarkable volunteers from Etobicoke Lakeshore who have received this year's Volunteer Service Award. And my colleague, Minister Ford, and the member from Eglinton Lawrence and I were at the ROM last week to uh, hand out these awards. Now, Mr. Speaker, volunteers are the backbone of our communities. They work is indispensable, but it's also sometimes invisible. So on behalf of my constituents, I want to recognize these incredible community champions. Patricia Coyle, for five years at the Women's College Hospital. Marlene DaCosta, five-year award for St. John's Ambulance Toronto Region and Dog Therapy Program. Simon Donato Woodger, five-year award for Kensington Health. Joanne Vandenberg for five years for volunteering at the St. John's Ambulance Toronto Regional Dog Therapy Program. Miko Abe Kozlowski for 10 years with the Japanese Cultural Center. And I have to go check that out. <laughs> Sharon Kawata for 10 years with the Harbourfront Center. Giovanni for 10 years with the Ontario, sorry, the St. John's Ambulance Toronto Region Therapy Dog Program. Susan Miller, 10 years with the St. John's Ambulance Dog Therapy Program. David and Hope Fillimore, both 15 years with the Toronto International Film Festival. Samaric Salak for 25 years with the Toronto International Film Festival. Ken Fustashima, 30 years with the Japanese Canadian Cultural Centre. Each ward recipient has a story of generosity, perseverance, and kindness. Thank you to our volunteers. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors.